Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purna Purna. No, I'm I'm in the wrong page here. <laughs> Sadashiva Samaramba Shankara Sharya Madhyamam Asmada Sharya Pariantam Vande Guru Param Param By the way, Swami Paramartananda, I start reading the Ken Upanishad. For some reason that I, I don't remember, he begins the class with uh, Purnamidam. You know, I follow in Jish, because of Jish, because of that, we do Jish Shanti. Okay. Where are you? Where are we? Verse, please help me. Verse 95. Huh? The beginning. 95. Yeah. Yeah, 95. On the other hand, those who are firmly established, huh? we have seen the verse which were somehow uh, uh, highlighting né, the, the nature, uh, the fruits of the self-knowledge, you know, and uh, the fact that there are some obstacles, and one of the obstacles is to feed into duality, attributing reality to duality, the way we behave, the way we interact, is going to 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 reinforce reinforce this notion of division, of divide, of separateness. You know, so we have seen all these things, and uh, all dualist uh, philosophies uh, do that, nourish that notion. Yoga is is said to be uh, ignorance because of that. It somehow reinforces. Uh, the yoga in the sense that uh, I believe that freedom is found in an object of experience, which means to say that it is the vision, the experiencer, and the experienced. Yeah? If you if you see Brahman, or if you see freedom, or moksha, or enlightenment as an object of experience, you are unfortunate, okay? And that is where uh, yoga uh, falls uh, short in most cases, yeah? So there is separation, there is a problem, it's unfortunate. So, and then what do we need? Purity, we, we have seen it, we need purity. What is purity? Is to develop, cultivate and develop vastness, you know, uh, impressions, tendencies that do not attribute reality to duality so that you can experience duality without, without being caught up and hooked and uh, dependent on, on, on mutual objects, you know? So purity is necessary. We have seen the purity is going to allow us to offset this, this, this huge tendency of uh, seeing duality as reality, experience separateness, you know, and the dualists are indeed inclined to, to do that. And therefore, this is unfortunate. And then the, the, the verse we begin today says that on the other hand, on the other hand, those who those who are firmly established in the unborn uniform Brahman. So what it means, it means that uh, you see the world as for what it is, just projections of Nama Rupas, but you know that everything is resolved in Brahman as Brahman. So this firm and vision establish the mind. The mind remains established in this vision, in this, in this, this understanding. You know, which is said to be established in the unborn, uh, uniform, yeah, no change, and no parts, Brahman. These people who have got to that certainty of self-knowledge, of firmly established self-knowledge, is said to be people of great wisdom. Uh, the common man, however, does not understand that. Just a moment, I'm feeling a bit cold. So the common man does not understand that. Okay. So he presents the, the two uh, sides, extremes of the spectrum. Now the people who are total, totally uh, deceived by duality, by projection of duality, now the appearance of duality, duality, and those who who have understood it, they are well-informed people. They are informed by the scriptures, by Shwara, uh, and they are firm in this understanding. Uh, 
and they develop great wisdom in the world. So there is something about wisdom that I, I take the chance to elaborate a little bit here. <clears throat> so there are two things, as we know. One thing is uh, intellectual academic knowledge in respect to the scriptures, you understand? So I, I say that because I have contact with people in my Brazilian group who have great academic knowledge, but they don't have wisdom, you understand? With wisdom appears to be something different, much different, and I have been uh, observing it since quite some time. You know, wisdom seems to be something which is a byproduct of a mind has, which has become very, very satisfied, contemplative, due to a hard and fast, well-established self-knowledge that somehow uh, liquidates those ragas and diversions, desires and diversions, which is uh, feeding into the belief that reality is duality. Yeah? So to me, wisdom, I have been talking on different uh, subjects, including Vedanta and other object, other subjects, such as the, the, the situation in the world, you know? And I, I, I met someone who has, uh, he's an academic, and he has all kinds of knowledge, but does not have wisdom. Winters is very simple, but it reflects a mind so contemplative and clear that sees things more clearly, connect the dots, sees what makes sense, what does not make sense, you understand? Sees, you know, uh, coherence and incoherence. And uh, so uh, what is a man, a people of great wisdom? Is a people such as what? Uh, Ramana Maharaj, he almost did not go to the school. And when you read his books, you'll see that it's filled with wisdom, you know, in that case, spiritual wisdom. But he could talk with different on different fields of knowledge with different people, including some scholars on science. <clears throat> and uh, because you have the clarity to, to, to just see things, infer things, you know, uh, sense you know, things, if this is a wrong notion or bad notion, if this is fake news or, or, or good news, if this is, is uh, uh, true uh, knowledge or, or confusing abstract uh, pointers, you know, you can see someone who genuinely is, is uh, presenting uh, knowledge and the ones who are presenting something mixed up, you know, uh, for some other reason, you know? So wisdom allows someone to detect all those things because the mind develops so much more sattva, sattva, sattva guna that allows wisdom to take place, okay? So on the other hand, those who are firmly established in Brahman, as Brahman, the one which is without parts, without change, without any inclusions, therefore uniform, these are people of great wisdom living in the world, but with wisdom, okay? It's not that one develops a mind such as the mind, uh, omniscient mind of Ishwara, no way, impossible. But one develops wisdom, which is more clarity to to see things, you know? It's a, it's a, it's a common sense. It, it is a, an ability to, to have insights uh, which are closer to, to what is, you know? what is happening what, in whatsoever field of uh, investigation, exploration, analysis, or study. You know? But the common man, the man who have a mind uh, conditioned for by excess of Rajas and Thomas, you know, will never understand that. They will never understand that one's true nature is the uniform consciousness, limitless consciousness, which is beyond time, beyond birth and death. So the common samsari will not even come close to understand that, okay? And what is the other extreme is the, the person of wisdom and the wisdom begin with academic, intellectual self-knowledge, but there is something that it's attribute to, to the internalization of self-knowledge that Swami Paramartananda of, often describes it in a very practical terms, which is a, a balance or mental, emotional, psychological strength to deal with the world. This is in a very practical uh, expression of the fruits 
of the knowledge once it's really adultless, properly internalized self-knowledge, okay? <clears throat> but the other aspect, the other fruits of this uh, properly in internalized and digest self-knowledge is an inner transformation that allows wisdom, allows uh, development of much more sattva to the extent that one sees things much more clear than before, okay? than before. Why I say that as well? Because I had, I have had that experience before I got to Vedanta, when self-realization took place, and I, I found myself, uh, uh, experienced the world from a, a, a new patamar of understanding, of wisdom, you know, of clarity, okay? So there is something about you recognizing that uh, you are consciousness, everything is consciousness and uh, you are the only reality somehow that does something uh, with uh, with the the human intellect. It purifies, that is the fire of self-recognition. That's why I like this word, self-recognition. The fire of self-recognition burns so much impurities, meaning to say ignorance, uh, a negative tendency that somehow uh, disturbs the intellect, uh, preventing it from being clear and developing good insights and wisdom. See, you understand that, huh, Mark? <clears throat> yeah, definitely. Yeah, I, I understand exactly what you're saying. Good. We all have that that experience that uh, we can, we all test testimonials to that because as the mind becomes more satvic because somehow those rags and versions were greatly uh, uh, minimized, you know? Uh, what happens? We become more insightful. We become more clear. Huh? It's a common experience of everybody in this process of, uh, of Vedanta for some time. Huh? So that's what I want to say about wisdom. And uh, on the other end, the common samsari does not understand any of that. And maybe he was referring as well as the, the dualists. Huh? philosophically speaking. So, so I'm Paramartananda presents this internalization or final internalization and fructification of self-knowledge as mental, emotional strength, balance. But there is another aspect to that fruits of internalized self-knowledge, which is mental clarity, insightful mind. You understand? <clears throat> Yodhupada says that the person who has come to this knowledge, a very rare, admirable one, and one that has to be congratulated because he or she has gone through a long journey to come to the binary format. So the person who understands Vedanta is already a very rare individual that has passed from the triangle mode or format to the binary format. Okay, so we remember what is the binary format. It's just like there is two principles operating here. One is spirit, another is matter, energy. So uh, one is satya, another one is mitya. Uh, one is consciousness and the other one is matter. So and uh, subject and the other one is object. Uh, so the person who understood uh, Vedanta knows that the final tool we have to finally, uh, once for all, internalize this knowledge is to keep on uh, discriminating, you know, the true subject from all objects, you know, the true satya, you know, <clears throat> the true consciousness, which is not the intellect, from the intellect, mind, emotions, and everything in the five koshas. So this discrimination is the, the tool that allows us to do this job. And this is already uh, in the course of a binary format sadhana, okay? Anything that I can experience and know is not my true nature. And I want to be absolutely faithful to my true nature. I want to, as he says here, I want to be established in, the, in my true nature, never getting confused between my true nature as consciousness and my apparent nature as the intellect. Howsoever, purify the intellect may be. Right, Lynn?
Oh, my voice is better today. I thought with myself, well, oh, there is my my throat is drying too much, and then in the morning, morning I can almost speak. So what did I do? I slept with my mouth shut. So that was good. So I just, I did not put a tape because it was not necessary, but I I could go to that extreme, and then uh, my voice was better this morning. So we, we, we moved into the binary format, but we must remember that we all start with Kam Yoga. I deliberately enter in the triangular format and I accept Saguna Brahman. I depend on Saguna Brahman for support and for purification. Depend on Saguna Brahman, I follow Kam Yoga, Upasana, and observance of Dharma. These will be so to acquire sadhana katustaya sampati, okay, which are the preparedness. Then, by the grace of Bhagwan, I finally am purified and refined enough that Bhagwan presents uh, the Upanishads and the Guru, the shra the scriptures and the Guru. Uh, life brings that to us, and then I go through uh, the Shravanam and the Manana Vedanta. Yeah. So, and then I, I begin this process, begin this process, and I do Shravana and Manana. We should not do only Shravana, but the recommendation is that we do Manana, which often I refer to as homework. Yeah. I go through Shravana and Manana, and with the grace of Brahman, of Shwara, the Lord, Shravana and Manana is going to be successful, you know? What is the success? It's going to bring me a doubtless knowledge in regards to my true nature. Doubtless knowledge, I am consciousness of Satchitananda nature. I am that Brahman that the scriptures talk about. Now I have no doubt. The logic is clear. The understanding is precise without vagueness and abstractions. So I'm clear about that. Once I have done Shravad and Mana for some time, how long? Depends on each one of us. And then with the grace of the Lord, what is the grace of the Lord? Is the level of uh, maturity or refinement or purification that I have developed so far. Yeah? So Ishwara is not going to grace anyone who, who has not uh, deserved who does not deserve that grace? The grace is, is earned by each one of us through our efforts. Sure is the system. <clears throat> and then uh, we have success. And then when we have success, we have this firm self-knowledge. And then uh, and then once I have this understanding of my true nature, I switch over from the triangular format to the binary format. This is Nijijyasana, another way to understand Nijijyasana, okay? So I am the conscious subject witnessing principle and uh, I am the subject and uh, everything appearing is an object of knowledge, experience. You know, I am Satya, the world is Mitya. And uh, so we just, uh, we, we kind of deny in our sadness, we deny for some time our inferior nature, you know, without neglecting our roles in society. We, but we, we don't give energy. We have given enough energy to our inferior nature, period nature. Now we want to embrace our superior nature as, as consciousness, which is the, the true subject principle, witnessing principle. So I switch over from the triangular format to the binary format. Each person has to decide for herself or himself whether the understanding has taken root. Very nice. I mean, I... I have been talking so much about this knowledge that should grow roots in the causal body. And here it appears. So each person has to decide for himself or herself whether the understand has taken roots in the causal body, in the unconscious mind. I should be truly convinced that I am consciousness of Brahman nature, of limitless nature, Satchitananda nature. I am the Adhisthana that supports everything. I do not need any support on Ishwara 
because Ishwara, Jiva, and Jagata, they just appear with seeing myself as Satchitananda Brahman. So each one of us has to decide if we were read for that, okay? If we are read to that. Because what happens? If we are not really a read for that, it could happen that we shift to the binary uh, format and it will stay there. Everything is in me and me. And I'm saying that because some people uh, brought this question to me, you know? And then they don't see much of any change happening in their inner self, in their body-mind, you understand? Inner transformation. And then they believe that this uh, binary format does not really uh, work, okay? That it's just a mechanical uh, uh, approach. I'm such, everything is me, I'm such, everything is me. So it, it should not be something just kind of mechanical, but it should be uh, based on this uh, fully uh, convinced understanding that consciousness is the only witnessing subject principle and everything else are projections of objects upon consciousness. This understanding has to be so clear. I am the support, therefore I don't need to, to to live in the triangular format. What is the triangular format? I am Jiva and Jagat is before me. I attribute uh, reality. Therefore, why? Do, how do I know that I attribute reality to duality, to this uh, Mitya world, to this Jagata? Why? Because I, I always look for comfort and security uh, to the creator, yeah? I support, you know, security and consolation. So I need Ishwara so that I can deal with this challenging world. So I'm in the triangular mode because somehow I'm still taking uh, this duality, this, uh, this Vyabharika, this Jagata as reality to a certain extent, to a certain degree. Yeah? So therefore we need to be careful before decide whether I should go fully into the binary format and uh, therefore dropping God dependence. So my take is that you can do both, okay? And uh, so I'm Paramartananda mentions that here and there. He says, just uh, stay in the triangular, but begin increasing uh, the binary sadhana uh, you know, uh, and let it grow, let it grow. And then you do more and more this uh, such a mitya vasana discrimination, you know, in a very profound way and less of uh, the karma dharma. So uh, we have to see entering binary format is the beginning of nijijyasana. How beautiful. Huh? What is nijijyasana? Not this, not this. I, I'm looking, I'm searching for reality. Reality is, is the light of consciousness, illumining, uh, revealing it. every object of experience, even in the subtle world. So I'm none of these. I am the light of consciousness. So, but it has to go deep. It should not be mantrically repeat this Nididhyasana, this, this uh, Vibeka. Huh? Uh, so once we have entered the binary, but in a, in a truly profound uh, way, we have begun uh, the Nijijyasana, the Vedantic Nijijyasana. There may be many thoughts back to, falls back to the triangular. Ah, now he says, yeah, you can go back to the triangular format. When things are a little bit tough, you don't have full, uh, full security or, or strength in the knowledge. Just imagine somebody comes to you, Mark, and says like, Mark, you are not uh, subject to that. Oh, but these people, uh, they have uh, uh, some uh, weapons with, with bullets and they are just ready to shoot me, you know? And then you say, well, so don't worry because, you know, just like Krishna said to Arjuna, you know, nothing can hurt really you. So you will see what is the degree, the level of trust in that, uh, in that uh, declaration of affirmation, you know? So it, you need to be so sure, so sure about the, the, the truth, the factual truth of those statements 
to, to just say, okay, so since I cannot change that, let the bullet hit me because I am consciousness and I'm free and independent of this body-mind and whatsoever uh, experience is possible through this body-mind. So if you fall back in a moment that people are pointing the guns to you, you know, and you say, no, this is too much to ask for me. I'm a Nidhyasaka, but you know, this is too much, Brahman. So, and then you say, you run to Ishwara and say, Ishwara, please take me away from this situation. Save me because, you know, the bullets are coming. Yeah? So that's why I brought that, that example. So if you fall back in the triangle format, that's no problem, you know. Over time, you're gonna stay more and more in the binary. The, 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 the triangular format is when circumstances are a little bit too tough. And then we cannot handle without that leaning to a Saguna Brahman. Say, oh, Brahman, please yeah, help me out here because I don't have the strength to deal with this situation. No. <clears throat> and then he said, there are many, uh, there may be many, but with time, the binary format will proceed, it will take over now, it's going to dominate your mind. It will become your main sadhana. Binary format becoming natural is called yana nista. So when the when the binary format become uh, becomes natural, it's called a firm, a firm atma yana, you know, yana nista, you know, fortitude, certainty you know, of self-knowledge. So it's so natural that, uh, no, you say it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. When we say it's okay, we can say from different angles. One of the day, it's okay because uh, Ishwara is fundamentally developed from the standpoint of the human jiva is better represented, you know, in a more comprehensive way as the law of karma. So, and then you say, it's okay, it's all karma, it's all Ishwara, it's all the system. If it's happening, it's all good. So you can you can just uh, have that kind of knowledge that is going to, to you know, to create uh, uh, mental strength as well. But the ultimate mental strength is the one and freedom and moksha. That's why it said only in yoga uh, can conduce, is conduced to self-knowledge. You get a little bit of strength with Kama Yoga, with the binary, uh, the triangular mode, but ultimately it is the binary format that is going to give you total protection, yana nista, yeah? or Brahma mystity. A person who has come to this stage, stage is a rare one, as Krishna describes in Bhagavad Gita. We don't know how rare this person is. We don't know. Swamiji does not. Uh, elaborate and uh, it does not matter we never need to see uh, you know what is possible in terms of uh, Yananista, how firm my knowledge is you know I mean there are so many pointers indicating that there is some human tendencies we see in great sage such as the one uh, described in the ashram when the, the there is a, a, a herd of elephants coming to run over the ashram. So the guru was the first one running in front of his disciples and climbing a tree to save his inferior nature, the body-mind. So uh, those are human uh, tendencies, which is survival, you understand? So Yananista is a certainty that uh, allows room for you to have a human uh, in, impulse and even some animalistic animal instincts or impulse here and there is still possible to the degree that uh, further purification may be still also possible, right? Among thousands of people, a rare person makes an effort for knowledge and moksha. Uh, it says Krishna in the Gita, among thousands of people, a rare person makes an effort for self-knowledge and moksha. It's so true. Even the initial effort, thousands and thousands and thousands of people, even among those rare individuals making an effort, only a rare person comes to self-knowledge and moksha. 
We could break that in so many different stages, you know. Very rare you find somebody interested in spirituality, associated with the scriptures of the Vedic scriptures and Vedante. Very rare. And then rare among those rare are going to stay with the program, which was an expression that James used to, to, to use. Very rare among those rare are going to stay with the program. Very rare of those who stayed with the program are going to accept the guru and begin uh, studying consistently and systematically with the help of the guru, such as we are doing here. Some people say, ah, I just take a little piece here, a little bits here and that, pa, 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 you know, and uh, cop and paste. Uh, a rare person will really understand Vedanta and take it seriously, meaning to say, uh, sub submitting to, to it uh, consistently and systematically. What is a systematic approach? It means, so I want to become a, a mathematician because I understand, I want to understand the theory of relativity. So, and then I have to begin from the basic level of mathematics, you know, and then you say, oh, you're going to have to study 15, 20 years at least, because there are so many stages that the base has to be there. And then you grow. This is a system. Oh, no, 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 no. I, I give to all for me. I can I can have a pick here on this stage seven or stage five. Stage. I just play with it. And uh, I'm so smart. I will get it. No. So I'm from another says again, consistent and systematic you know, approach with the help of a teacher good teacher, honest teacher. <clears throat> and then those people who follow the program, among them very rare individuals are going to come to the end and get this uh, clear self-knowledge. And even more rare are the ones that uh, complete the entire process to, to gain self-knowledge, okay? Which is described here as uh, uh, Yananista, uh, Nista, Yan, Yan, Yananista, no? Yeah, Yananista or Brahmistiti. A person who goes through several intermediate stages and abides in this knowledge firmly for a certain time, period of time, doubtlessly and spontaneously always is in Sahaja Samadhi. Mm, this is a very nice point, and let me highlight it. So, if you want to purify the mind so that you, the Jiva Atma, Jiva Atma, the body mind sense complex, you want to really enjoy a good state of mind, you know, ah, but you know, body mind is not reality. Okay, but you, you, you still have karma to unfold here, and it's better to unfold with a purified body-mind because you're going to have more wisdom, more love, more happiness, more sensibility, more clarity. This is samadhi. It's a nature of samadhi. The mind is clear, contemplative, uh, insightful, and uh, unafraid. A mind without desires and, and so on. It spontaneously, we develop that state, a nature of samadhi, a nature of a state of uh, of uh, peace, you understand? Why? Because uh, I have gone through all these several intermediate states, and then my self knowledge is formed, is doubtless. And then, what did it do to my ragas and diversions, my desires and aversions? It has destroyed them in the fire of knowledge, because knowledge dispels ignorance or destroys ignorance such as light dispels or destroys darkness no so and then there is this natural state before vedanta i was fascinated with some of these gurus that uh, not the gurus of modern world but gurus such as uh, in sagadatta and the teacher of sagadatta and some others no? so, so, swamis that were talking about the natural stage natural state hmm? It's a natural state, natural state of a mind which is reflective, contemplative, and sees things much more clearly. 
He does not, she does not attempt to remember the teachings of Vedanta. There is no need. People, in the beginning, there is need. This is Nididhyasana, holding on to the teachings, applying the teachings, you know, until it's uh, naturally uh, <clears throat> deposit in my subconscious mind. And then it works for me in a somehow uh, effortless way. Uh, so this person does not need to even make an effort attempt to attempt to remember the teachings. The teaching is alive in the subconscious mind. And then uh, when once when, when one responds to the stimulus coming from, from the Dharma field, the the impulse to the, of the response comes from that platform of self-knowledge. Yeah? That is the that's the idea, you understand? People in this stage uh, of the greatest possible wisdom. He's talking about some uh, Yanis, you know, so pure and such a great rare wisdom, you know. And uh, he does not remember. He he leaves from that state, you know. That Yanis basically is is Krishna or, or Brahman, you know, uh, appearing as a human being, because uh, the wisdom is so well established. But the Anyani can never understand the mental state of the Yani. This is beautiful as well. This is very much the point. The Anyani can never understand the mental state of the Yani. The Anyani can understand that the Yani has better insights in whatsoever. Can understand that the Yani is more clear now it appears that he is more intelligent. No, he has more wisdom. Wisdom is a is a byproduct of a sattvic mind. One who is a yani alone can know another yani. This is beautiful. Oh, I, I did not read the text today. This is a beautiful passage. So one who is a yani. Only alone that one can know another yam. What it means can recognize the other yani. Common people, anyanis, cannot identify a yani and cannot understand the state of mind of such a yani. So this is the dilemma. Uh, every thinker of uh, enlightenment or, or, or God or self-realization uh, as you know, because their minds are not uh, clear, purified, refined uh, enough, uh, uh, they they are subject to picking uh, wrong gurus. It's a fact. You understand, and uh, we have to trust Ishwar on that. You know, because we always get the guru uh, we deserve. Uh, we say, okay, Shwara, you, know, you are condu conducing me here. It's okay. It's like someone I remember in old days, there was somebody when I was associated with my first guru, there was so much into relationships with people and so on. And there was someone who, who was in love with somebody who supposedly was, was somebody much better resolved, you know, much more clear, you know, and so on. And this person, full of uh, problems, psychological problems, who want to have that relationship with the person. I will never forget that. I was telling the person, so, I mean, you cannot expect life to present you with something that is above, you know, uh, uh, beyond what you deserve. I mean, when you think that that person who seems to be so properly well resolved on a psychological level, get involved with someone full of psychological problems, you know, so it does not happen. And uh, the Anyani is going to pick gurus according to the state of development. But only the Yani can know another Yani, but Yani does not need a guru. <laughs> so we have to leave it all to Shwara after all, you understand? The Yani uh, does not need a guru, but can recognize uh, another Yani. Yeah, regardless of this other yani uh, being playing the role of a guru or not, a teacher or not, but uh, it can sense, you know. 
Beautiful. <clears throat> and it's uh, it, it's trick. It reminds me of Swam Paramartananda in his early days or years that he 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 report that he used to see a Swami. Uh, who was very famous in our Sampradaya, and he was a wonderful uh, teacher, you know. His expositions were perfect, beautiful. Mm -hmm. And every time he was in town in, in, in southern uh, Chennai, in India, Swam Paramartananda would go there, and most probably Swam Paramartananda was very young, and then he, he reports that one day this guru said publicly, oh, I'm a wonderful teacher and so and so, but you know, uh, I, I'm not self-realized. I'm just a good teacher. You know, and there are some, some teachers uh, on the academic level that may have an impact and an and impression on people's mind who cannot see beyond academic knowledge you understand uh the 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 wisdom can be sensed by the insights that one have which are based on the on the academic knowledge the intellectual knowledge that is the software and then you know the wisdom come from that platform of uh, informational knowledge you know? so you need to have a, a very subtle intellect to recognize the difference between again informative knowledge academic knowledge from wisdom so even swam paramartananda uh, was surprised consciousness in the unborn jiva is accepted to be unborn and relationless since consciousness does not contact any objects it is said to be uh, relationless. Uh, relationless is a sangha. Consciousness in the unborn jivas is accepted to be unborn and a sangha. A sangha. So this presents us with a uh, 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 potential apparent uh, contradiction. Because every time that the scripture says that consciousness is a sangha, we have to remember that uh, one of the stages in this process is called uh, actually all through. Vedanta does not use much of this expression, but the modern uh, Western world spiritual kind of circles use much this expression of sat sangha. What is satsang? It's association with consciousness, association with Brahman, association with the, the nature of Brahman. <clears throat> so there is a sangha there, sangha and sat, association with consciousness, association with Brahman, association with the truth, association with God, satsanga, satsang. And here we say that consciousness, God or Brahman, is a sangha. <laughs> it does not have any relationship, any no association with anybody. None of these devotes, you know, consciousness is associated to uh, because it is a Sangha. So we can accept that there is no uh, contradiction because uh, consciousness cannot be associated with anything and it cannot even take the association of anybody, okay? But from the standpoint of the seeker of knowledge, the seek, a seeker of truth, it must associate with consciousness. And since he does not know that consciousness, Brahman or Turiya, is their very intrinsic nature, they must association with the teachings that reveal that their very nature is Turiya, Brahman or consciousness. The association is always between the devotee, the, the disciple, the student and the scriptures that reveals to the student, Aham Brahmasmi. But consciousness is never associated to the student, 
but the scriptures that comes from consciousness, you know, is there revealing everything to the students. And this, the scriptures, although it is alive, you know, with the potential to transform the seeker, it's as well not in relation with anybody, you know. So the relationship has to come from the disciple, the student that search for a relationship which is the most elevated kind of relationship, the highest spot, the most noble, which is the relationship with the scriptures and the guru that unfolds the teachings. Well, consciousness does not have any association with any jiva. It is a sangha, relationless. A jivaitam can be established only when jivaitam is completely negated. A jivaitam can be established only when we really understood that all this division is a mere superimposition, appearance superimposition. And then we negate reality to duality, although this appearing duality persists. In Vedanta, jivaitam is introduced initially. As we know, Advaita Vedanta, oh great, Advaita Vedanta, but why do I talk about such a mitya? This is duality, yeah? isn't it? This is duality, such a mitya. So, Advaita Vedanta is not duality, but it introduced the concept of duality, such a mitya, at the beginning, initially, but later on, that is going to be retracted. Huh? Ajarupa and Apavada. So you cannot tell the people that the, the only reality is consciousness and there is no Mitya world at all, you know, and there is no duality, there is nothing. So the person will, will not be able to understand that statement. That should come at the very, very end. In the beginning, we need to accept the world, the creation. We need to understand that there is no creation without a creator, okay? Even if it's a creation we've seen a suborder of reality, which is a mere appearance, yet there is a creator, and this creator is, is Mr. Maya in association with Ishwara. Now, in Vedanta, Jivaitam is introduced initially. This is required in the beginning. This is maintained for a long time, and ultimately this also has to be reject or resolved. Yeah? To reveal the Atma, it's said that the Atma is the nature of the experiencer yeah? as the only principle that really experiences is this Atma, the self, although the self is not an object, is not an experiencing entity, but you can for sure com comprehend and understand that every experience resolves itself in consciousness without it, which no experience is possible. So who is experience? My body, mind, or consciousness, you know? So I have consciousness without it, this body, mind is just matter in, you know, in decomposition. You know? So, and then there is an experience. So it's just an instrument. So I, I can see, the class better with my pair of glass, but the pair of glass are not to see in the class. It's not seeing or reading the text, you understand? Consciousness is behind it all, but consciousness is not an entity moved by karma. It's not an experienced entity, yeah? subject to, to time and parabada and so on. So understanding that we have no problem to conciliate these statements, you know, that the, Consciousness is the ultimate experience of everything. Drig is Varupam. Drig, Drisha, is the ultimate seer, is consciousness. Although consciousness is not a, an experiencing entity. Yeah? This Atma, this self, is different from whatever is experienced. <clears throat> and thus, we introduce Drig, Drisha, Viveka. Oh, he's bringing Drig, Drisha, Viveka, beautiful. This is done very elaborately, detailing the five features of Drishan, Drishatva, the nature of the scene, the five levels of the scene, yeah? dealing with five features or levels, okay? 
we it's more or less on those semi lines of the five uh, koshas, okay. Uh, and then he presents here, Drisya, Drisya, Tvam, ba 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 Saguna. So it's uh, it's elaborated in a, in a different way. It's more technical, more uh, complex here, but fundamentally. Uh, the the ultimate seer, which is Drake, uh, can see and experience the world through several uh, means or instruments. Beginning, you know, we could say the intellect, and then the emotional mind, and then the thoughts, and then and then the uh, the sense organs, the sense instruments. You know, all of this is necessary for reaching out into the world of physical objects. So there are different levels of human experience that is more easily understood as the five koshas through which we reach out and experience the world of names and forms. Now, after understanding very well who, who is the real seer, the, the real experience, after understanding myself as to real, yeah, this ultimate consciousness, I I have to fold anatoma into myself. I have to, to fold back anatoma into myself. See, it, it all resolves in myself because it's a projection for myself. But I understand that there is no anatoma apart from me. I am the only screen on which all projections occur. The screen is the only reality. In the beginning, it said that I am different from Anachima. I'm such that the world is Mitya, and then I go, I'm not this, I'm not that, and so on. That and that, this is the beginning. Now, in the end, what are we going to say? And there is no Mitya objects. Those are just mirage-like projections. I am different from the body, mind, and the world. These are all objects, consciousness, is differentiated from matter and from energy. And finally, matter is resolved. And finally, matter and energy is resolved into consciousness by understanding that there is no matter or energy separate from consciousness. That's how we trace back the intellect. And the intellect needs to be very refined and purified to do this tracing back. Uh, in this Viveka, you're going to use the refined contemplative internet to discriminate what? Itself from consciousness. You know, that's why there is this notion that is it's kind of a spiritual suicide or the intellect has to kill itself and say, oh, I'm not the big deal. You know, <laughs> consciousness, I, I'm killing myself. Ah, no. And the intellect is so refined and so clear. It understands, oh, how beautiful. Finally understood who is behind me, my true nature, the Adistana that supports me. I am now an instrument of knowledge, an instrument of Viveka. Through this instrument, I could do this ultimate final Viveka, which is discrimination. I, the instrument, and what's behind me. And the intellect, the intellect is happy. He's going to enjoy a state often refer to Sahaja Samadhi. Huh? No big deal. <clears throat> what we call matter, the solid the material world, is only Namarupa and does not exist separate from me. They are superimposition. So the whole thing about this uh, metaphor or example or construct that uh, consciousness is the screen, the only reality, or, or is the mirror apparatus on which all these namarupas uh, appear as a reflection. You know, uh, need to be worked a little bit now nah? in our homework nah? to understand that. Uh, Nothing, there is nothing, 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 which is apart from I consciousness. Yeah. So how Maya produce this projection or reflection upon consciousness and I am consciousness, I have no clue. And the scriptures do not even bother to explain it. You understand? But we know from the dream state that the same similar phenomenon occurs. 
Okay, so out of uh, the blue, Maya, through a different kind of power referred to as Nidra Shakti, projects the subtle world of, of duality in which the, the dreamer goes about transacting in the dream world. You know, so how does that happen? We don't know. Okay, it's just a projection that occurs where? Upon my mind. A projection upon my mind or a reflection from my mind. Which mind? The mind of the dreamer, Taijaza, the shine one, because it shines off, it shines out the dream world. Okay. So it happens already. We know that it does happen. And from that angle, we can begin doing an Nidijasana to understand that this physical material world, it happens likewise as a projection or reflection upon me, but not my mind or my body or my stomach or my brain. It happens within consciousness because for, in order for me to understand that it's all a projection happening within myself or upon myself or reflect from myself, I need to be properly established as consciousness. You understand? Not as the intellect, the mind, or the body-mind complex. So once we're in the dream world, we, we have no clue that it's happening uh, within our mind, or it's a reflection of our mind. We just know that we are there as the experience, and we are just doing things. We are totally ignorant. And here, likewise, we are ignorant. But it's the same principle, OK? It's the same kind of reflection or projection that happens within a different aspect of consciousness, which is no longer the mind and its vasanas, but the collective mind of Maya, you know, the macrocosm Maya. There is where this reflection called the universe occurs. Okay, we, yeah, we experience this world, conceptual objects and sensory objects, mental objects, emotional objects. It's all happening the same way, you know, as a reflection or projection upon consciousness, the only reality. In simple language, we say these are all Nama Rupas, and then we have to go to more simple uh, examples, such as the, the gold ornaments, Okay, and among others, that fundamentally it's all gold, but it's made, you know, it appears as a gold ring, for example, yeah, with a form, a certain form. So when we say that the world appears as Nama Rupas, we mean to say fundamentally there is only the Prakriti of Maya, or in other words, the Gunas, and out of the Gunas, Ishwara produced this phenomenon, physical material in respect to our sense organs that are nothing but nama rupas, configurations of the gunas, you know, that produce this object that appears to us to be physical, material, tangible. But when we really examine it with our instrument, we see that there is nothing that is only what? Prakriti or space or energy. How Maya does that, we have no clue. Unfortunately, the scripture does not explain to us. But it's not AI, intelligence. Forget about that. AI cannot produce a subtle body. Even a stupid subtle body, AI cannot. Only, you know, artificial life, artificial mind is, can be produced <clears throat> by computers. This resolving of the anatema into atema is talked about in the final verse of this karika, which we'll see they are very profound verse. Ooh, profound verses with us, huh? So, and we're gonna see it as the conclusion of, uh, who knows if it's going to be the conclusion. I think so because they are very short verse. I'm not going to rush, whatever. Okay. So we have a plan, right?
when you meet again, just tell me. Or you want to do uh, this coming Monday still the Mandukya, not to get into any confusion. Huh? We do because I'm looking here, maybe it's going to take Monday and Tuesday. Okay? So we stick to Monday and Tuesday conclusion of the Karikas, and then we can squeeze more juice. No? And then Friday we go back to the Gita. And then we go from there. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Puna Purnamudachate Purna Sia Purna Madaya Purna Mevavashishate Om Shanti 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 Om <coughs> Namaste. We meet again soon. Thank you, Orlando. Thank you. Bye bye. Brilliant. Brilliant class. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Sylvia, the silent one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jot is over.